Hey guys, welcome back. Before we start, I need you guys to click the subscription button, subscribe to this channel, click the bell notification button so when I make awesome videos like this, you're not going to miss it. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Monica Spirit Queen. And I have a podcast that I am recording as we speak on my podcast, which is called Paranormal Hour. And you can find my podcast on Anchor, you can find it on you can find it on Spotify. And last but not least, go to my page. Patreon, Patreon page, and subscribe because you're going to get exclusive videos behind the scenes, including doing live investigations with us, and uh, you don't want to miss that. So go to patreon.com slash Monica Spirit Queen. We're going to be talking about spiritual attack as far as having attachments. What is an attachment? Sabrina and I are joining together once again for you guys to talk about spiritual topics as far as questions that you guys have been having. And we're here to answer you guys' spiritual questions. The topic is going to be death spells, what death spells are, are they real, do they really work? And of course, going back to attachments, what are attachments? Spiritual attachments? What are spiritual attacks? What are demonic attachments? Are they real? Do they exist? Stick around, you guys are going to find out right now. Welcome to my life adventures. I'm the one and only Monica the Spirit Queen. I'm a professional psychic medium and a paranormal investigator. My crew and I lurk in the shadows at night hunting spirits and demons. I do readings, break black magic spells, travel, expose fake psychics, and have clients from around the world. I'm no nonsense when it comes to respect and honesty. I have a crazy busy life, but I love it. My family keeps me going with their love and support. I will never give up no matter what demons I have to face. Hello. Hello. Well, good evening. Good evening, Monica. Hey, Sabrina. Welcome back. How are you? Yes, I'm, ex I'm doing good. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Awesome. So everybody, welcome Sabrina back. I told you guys last time I wasn't going to be the first or the last time she's going to be with us. We're going to keep bringing her back and she's going to keep asking awesome questions and get all the answers that you guys want. You guys have been looking for spiritually. And so here we are. So have you been? I've been good. I've been making a lot of big transitions in my life and I'm just excited to see where else life takes me awesome so we did talk about a few things that um, our clients have been asking us um, spiritual questions and we're gonna jump right in and answer your questions so the first one is about attachments what are attachments and um, are they real in the spiritual realm and they can they can actually if they can actually affect us in our physical realm and then also death spells I know a lot of people are interested in black magic spells and they want to know how death spells work if they're real or or not so we're gonna jump right in and Sabrina the floor is yours go ahead first question is what are attachments what are attachments are oh, you we're just gonna jump right in with that one huh attachments are spiritual beings some people call them energy some people call them ghosts attachments can be good spirits and they could be dark spirits they could uh, which is also known as demonic entities yes they are 100% real and they are entities that can affect us either in a negative way or in in a positive way and people can actually send attachments to others so yeah they are real and they are spiritual beings um, some people could see with their physical eyes and some people don't just depending how open your spiritual doors are and they can also be a pain in the ass sometimes yes they can be I dealt with attachments before and you know woke up with scratches different things like that bad attachments feeling off so I know that we're gonna go more into that in later on but attachments some attachments are not fun no they're not and they could be a pain in the butt and they could do a lot of things to you which we're gonna get into more details of course so the second question is we're gonna go back to death spell what is a death spell a death spell is exactly what it sounds like. Number one is considered, I put it in a category of black magic because it does consist of a lot of dark work. A death spell is very, very dangerous and if you put a death spell on somebody and it actually works, which it does in most cases if people know what they're doing, but if you put a death spell on somebody, it can work and it can kill you, just like spiritual attacks. The death spell is another way of saying, I'm getting spiritually attacked and it is 100% real and it happens. I've experienced a death spell. 
I believe it was around a year, year and a half ago, and it was horrible. And like you said, I was close to dying. It made me really confused, out of touch with reality. And there was one time I was driving and I had to park on the side of the highway. And because of that, you know, the attachments that were sent to me with this death spell was trying to push me to like go, like walk across the highway, you know? Right. Like going 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. And I was so confused and I had to like plead for my life and things like that. But thankfully nothing happened to me. And you know, the person that did send the death spell, they are gonna get their karma. Uh So I know that, you know, I'm protected and stuff like that. Right, it's even worse. I mean, I know the next uh, question people are gonna have on comment is, which one is worse? Having a death spell on you or having an attachment or both? Every single one of those are bad, but it is worse when you have both on you. Yes, that was was horrible. I don't want anyone to ever experience that. And it's really, stupid to me that people would put death spells in others like you cannot play god Mm -mm. no you cannot and unfortunately some people try and you know taking matters into your own hands and taking somebody's life in your own hands and controlling when they get to die and when you want to put a death spell on them or send an attachment to them like you said you know karma number one and number two if you if you're sending a death spell uh, which i don't recommend anybody to do you guys better not send any death death spells to anybody but if that's the case what ends up happening too is you might send it to the wrong person and this person is very spiritual this person knows a lot about spirituality is an expert on it has a lot of knowledge and they can turn around and turn it back on you and guess what you're you're going to be gone soon if that's the case one of the examples i'm going to give real quick that happened to me a few months ago is somebody tried and i quote tried to send a death spell on me i mean can you imagine out of everybody in this world if they want to send it on me i was like that is the most dumbest thing that is the most stupidest person on this planet to attempt to send any kind of spell on me yet alone a death spell i ended up finding out who did it obviously it didn't work because i'm still here hello and i just reversed it back on the person you guys need to be careful like i said if you want to send a death spell on somebody somebody that's very powerful and spiritual not only can i take you down and physically drag your ass down to hell with bells and whistles on but i can wipe out your whole entire family as well so don't fuck with me don't fuck with those who are very spiritual don't fuck with sabrina because i am teaching her some tricks here and there behind closed doors where she's gonna be able to spiritually attack you guys as well don't fuck with those who know what the fuck they're doing especially if you're an amateur and don't think that just because you're gonna go to somebody else for help another so-called psychic medium there's a lot of there out there that are fake they just take your money and they don't do shit or they make things worse for you it's not gonna work you, you're not gonna you can go to 100 people if you want to put these kind of death spells on me or sabrina or anybody that i know and care about and i will hunt you down and i'm i'm talking about myself and anybody else nobody is going to physically touch you or we don't have to physically be there in order to take you down i could do it from home and then you're gonna feel that on you now i haven't killed anybody okay don't get me wrong i haven't killed anybody to me the best best way to get back at somebody that's negative that tries to attack me or people i know that and i care about the best revenge is to make them pay for it by suffering i'm going to turn your whole entire life around upside down you think a death spell is bad you're gonna wish you never even said my name yet alone try to put something on me the death spell is nothing compared to what i'm gonna do to a point where i don't even have to fucking kill you because you're gonna end up jumping off a bridge yourself i'm gonna gonna make your life the worst living hell you've ever lived in experienced and then i'm gonna come after your family just because i can and because i choose to just the way that you choose to attack people i choose to come after your family as well and see what the fuck happens and how much you guys like it so don't fuck with death spells not the smartest thing to do next (laughs) am i right yes i people just it floors me that they would even do anything to you like it doesn't make sense to me and they cannot handle it at all the repercussions so you're right to go after them because they deserve it because you i know you just focus on 
being a mom, a wife, you know, running your business, you don't have time for the BS. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, if you're bored and you guys, you know, you want to practice spirituality, that's, that's a whole different story. Again, don't mess with death spells. I don't recommend it. Educate yourselves as far as what can happen, not just with you messing with spirituality, but something goes wrong. And, and a lot of things go wrong a lot, you know, when it comes to trying to do black magic spells with people, because a lot of times they go by the books, exactly the same reason why I don't go by the books. But a lot of times they go by the books and the books are all false information and it backfires on them. So if you want to put a death spell on somebody and you fuck it up, guess what? You might as well tell your family to start planning your fucking funeral because it backfires and it hits you a hundred times worse than what you were trying to do to someone someone else. And that's the reality of, of uh, dabbling with shit that you're not supposed to be dabbling with. They don't think about that at the moment. That's the issue. Like, it just seems like people who are not justified in their reason, they just think one step at a time. They don't think long term. You know? Right. And, <laughs> and, and the consequences of the actions. Exactly. And don't, you know, don't be selfish. You, have you noticed the ones that are doing it are not just the ones that live in their mama's basement? <laughs> which is true but also they're selfish they, they don't have a life go get a job stop depending on the government to pay you every month because you're fucking lazy and you don't have one you know keep yourself busy keep your mind busy and don't stick your nose to other people's business where it doesn't belong because then you can really get yourself in trouble so don't be selfish if you guys notice it's in all fucking movies too you watch selfish people never end up on top the devil will get to them also it's greed as well like people being greedy and not having an identity like you said not having a life so exactly let's get on to the next question where do attachments come from where do attachments come from attachments can come from many different places it can come from a location that you're in, you know, very like a haunted location. It could come from people sending it to you, going back to the selfish, greedy people, sending attachments. It could come from you accidentally opening up a portal and then you're getting an attachment. I've noticed lately a lot of attachments are coming from these fake psychics who are doing these tarot card readings. They open up a portal. They don't send a demonic entity back and close the portal back up where it came from they open up a portal invite a demonic entity to do the reading for them for the most part and then they send the attachment on their way to the client so they don't no longer have to deal with it so congratulations now you have a fucking attachment from a tarot card reader that so many of you trust and then get burned at the end what so you're telling me that they all they get each time they use a new demonic entity and they said it's that clear. Right. Those who claim themselves to be like real tarot card readers, they're not really doing the reading themselves. They have an attachment, a, a demonic entity they call upon to help them do the reading for them. A lot of times they allow themselves to get possessed by these entities. And then after at the end, they will send you home with the attachment. And you don't necessarily have to go to them physically. They could do a reading over the phone and then send the attachment to you when they're done wow that is that is so bad it's I horrible i know huh? yeah it's what would be their intention to send this attachment you know like overall because they don't want to deal with it a lot of times a lot of those who dabble with things like that and do that they don't have the experience or the knowledge of how to send them back and close the portal back up so they don't want to deal with it and they'll just send it home to you other times they'll send the attachment to you so bad things can start happening your situation gets worse and that way you go back to them you keep going back to them and they keep milking your money. So oh they never no. fixed a problem. Is, Sorry, go ahead. That's horrible. No, you're fine. That's horrible. Like, that's taking advantage of the public. You have to be really careful what spiritualists you go to. Right. You can't trust everybody, especially those who say, well, what are some names they call themselves? It's just not Mother Teresa. I'm not surprised. I will not be surprised if someone calls themselves Mother Teresa and does that. And ha have you seen the way they act, the way they dress, like to fit the part of a psychic medium and how hard they try? Yes. It's a lot of show. It's a lot of colors. It's a lot of, you know, distractions. And it's interesting. Like this one tarot reader, I remember his live streams used to be like a like a club. Literally, lights 
laser beams everywhere. And he would have techno music playing. And I'm like, I don't know how anybody could concentrate on his readings because he's speaking in like ASMR and you can't even see what he's doing. Are you serious? Yes, it was horrible. I could not stay more than a minute. I never got a reading from him. I don't know how anybody was able to, but yes. And this is a guy doing it, not a female, but a man. A man, yes. Oh my God. I know. Yeah. Um, everybody that has experienced something similar with tarot card readers, I'm really interested to know. I need you guys to comment and let me know what your experiences were and how they dressed, how they acted, if you noticed if they tried too hard to impress you. A lot of times they'll keep repeating themselves and talking out of their butt. Just pay attention to those signs. And the worst thing that I've ever seen that people have not caught on yet every time they go see a reader until I mention it is, have you noticed those fake tarot card readers that send the attachment back to you, they don't do an accurate reading number one. Number two, you are left with more questions than answers. And number three, they answer your question with your question. You get what I'm saying? They use your word, just twist it around a little bit, and then respond back to your question. It's amazing how, how many people or how many of you guys watching and listening right now have not noticed these tarot card readers. I want to know if anybody has actually gotten decent accurate answers from any of these fools out there let's say you guys did a 15 minute reading keep it short and simple which to me 15 minute reading it, it takes me at least 15 minutes to block myself before i do the reading so i don't understand how you could do a 15 minute reading boom like that uh it amazes me sometimes how people fall for that shit but at the same time let's say 15 minute reading right and you have about 15 questions a question a minute tell me how many of you guys have actually gotten every single answer for your questions I'll guarantee that everybody will say at least one question was answered everything else was bogus and not they didn't even get all the answers they needed so don't go to a fucking fake psychic that's all I gotta say next how do you know if a death spell is placed on you death spells how do you know if a death spell is placed on you when the energy changes around you it's going to go negative it's going to go south towards the dark dark energies you're going to start feeling really tired really really tired and drowsy your mind and your head is going to be cloudy where you can't even think on your own anymore you're going to feel like you're being consumed by darkness and this darkness is going to start controlling your life and then at the same time your health is going to start going downhill depends what type of death spell it is that can and will affect your health because there are death, death spells out there that I mean there's so many you know I mean so many different ways to die and when people put certain type of death spells on you you're going to feel it a lot of times people will see flashes of them dying or even see things in their dream that's gonna come to them there's a lot of different ways and then also if you know of a person who could have put the death spell on you like a particular specific person that has put a death spell on you or if you feel like they did you're going to see that person in your mind at times that person's gonna pop up to in your mind without you even thinking about that person and you're gonna wonder why this person keeps popping up in your head you're going to see see them in your dreams a lot of times when you do see them in your dreams they're going to try to send you messages in your dreams you get what I'm saying yes it's making me think back to when I was experiencing my death spell I saw the person in the dream and I thought about them randomly and I don't know it might be different for every person but mine it was a slow onset like I couldn't pinpoint it because mm -hmm. the person knew that I was spiritual, I was, you know, psychic, mm -hmm. had abilities. So it was like a slow cloud drifting, and then it was months, and then by time, and then it was like, boom, 
an explosion. That's crazy. You will see the way sometimes of how you're gonna die. Basically, what the what type of death spell has been putting put on you. You're going to feel a certain way around that person as well. Your energy is gonna heighten up more. You're not gonna feel comfortable around that person anymore. You don't want to talk to that person. Um, you don't like their energy anymore. You know things like that. So just pay attention to those signs. And if you do suspect that you might have a death spell on you because this is not a joke, don't hesitate to contact me. <laughs> you can contact Sabrina as well. And you know, we'll go from there and, and do a reading and see what's going on. But the fact that this is heavy duty spiritual work that has been put on you in order to either reverse it or break it. I like to break it for my clients. Reversal, not so much because like I said, I don't want to kill anybody and I have not killed anybody and I'm against that, but I could reverse it to where instead of them dying, they're going to feel like they're dying, but they're really not going to. And I'm going to turn their whole life upside down. So. Don't do it, you guys. Don't do it. Next. So, yes. The next question is, can, I mean, uh, you answered it earlier, but can you elaborate what type of good attachments can you have? The good attachments would be either angels. Um, angels don't like to attach themselves to people. If you, for example, have a guardian angel, they can pop in and out, check on you and leave. The reason why I'm mentioning angels too is because a lot of people have asked me, do I have an attachment that's an angel? Angels don't attach themselves to people. So a lot of times I would say the answer is no. But the other way of having a good, or not another way of having one, but another way of knowing and having a good attachment is your loved ones, your relatives, your family, your friends, associates, and anybody that has crossed over, your loved one, mother, father, kid whatever they will typically like to stay with you or around you be with you that's a positive attachment and I know a lot of people I communicate with tell me that their loved one is with them they, they've heard them before they've seen them before if you don't feel any negative energy or negative negative vibe coming from that attachment then that's a good one that attachment is a good attachment, it's a positive one, and it's not there to, to hurt you. Okay, good. I like that, because I remember I had my grandpa who passed away that was always with me. And I always felt guilty because I wasn't able to go to his funeral, because at the time my parents were going through a divorce and I was a minor, and my mom wouldn't let me go to the funeral. So I felt sad and overwhelmed, but you know, he'll come and comfort me and give me advice at times. And it was really good. That's awesome. And they were like giving me synopsis of my life and they were telling me, it's not your time to go yet mm -hmm. because you overcame a life lesson. But if you went down the wrong path, which you had the option of doing, if you weren't humble and didn't learn this life lesson, your life would have been shorter and there was a chance that this would have worked. Right. So that's why I'm really curious to know what is your, you know, expert opinion on the situation. You were right when when you said it the last time when I told you from day one, spirituality is very, very tricky right there's so many things that play into spirituality into the work that you're doing um, especially the death spells so many different things can happen now if it's not your time to go there's a lot of times it's not going to work you're absolutely right unless fuck up your faith and your soul yourself but who are we to decide whose time it is you know what i'm saying to go i can't really sit here and say yes it's gonna work 100 percent. no it's not gonna work 100 percent because because like I said, everybody's situation is different. What your ancestors told you and said about, you know, you gotta be humble, otherwise if you go the other way, it, it could work. Definitely, because if that at that moment, you're dabbling with the dark side and you don't care about your soul. So it's gonna be a lot easier for somebody to take your soul. They could take you down. You will feel the effect of black magic spell on you and a lot of things could go wrong in your life and they could go bad really, really fast. That's why I said if you, feel anything 
any small little thing on you guys you need to get the help that you need immediately and don't cry about i don't have the fucking money okay you guys have money if you don't have money go get a fucking job make sure you guys are stable with money before you fucking contact us because i'm sick of saying that every time but does that answer your question yes i wish when i was going through that experience i knew you because it took me a long time to recover afterwards after that death spell it took me like months yeah. It, was, it was horrible. I don't want anyone to go through that because I literally had to stop all aspects of spirituality and just reset myself. I couldn't do spell work because I was too energetically weak, but reset my life and just, you know, balance myself with sleep, rest, isolation, things like that. It was horrible. And I'm glad you mentioned isolation. The fastest, easiest way to get to somebody is when they're isolated and they don't have the help and they don't have anybody around them to help them. So it'll be a lot easier for that person to get attacked and hurt. Yes. So the next question is, can an attachment affect your love life as well? You know, if you're in a relationship or you want to date someone or even, you know, married, how can this attachment affect you? That's a really good question. Remember going back to saying if you have an attachment or a black magic spell on you or even both, which both is worse. Not only are you going to get affected by it, but your loved ones around you are definitely going to get affected by it. And sometimes your significant other gets affected, not just worse, but stronger and faster than you would get affected by an attachment or any type of spiritual attack. So yeah, definitely it, it bounces off. And then going back to that isolation, that's exactly what they want to do. They want to break you guys up. Once they're successful with that, your marriage is over, your relationship is over, and they can now trap you where they want you at and keep you that way and keep you away from happiness. So none of your relationships will work out. I, I do see that happen with, you know, I know cases of that happening to others with the attachments. It seems like they do that a lot. They like, like you said, to isolate you and to cause people to be against you, all these blockages for you to feel. Have you ever heard of <clears throat> someone feeling like they have that cloud of shame or like they feel like they're just always pushing people away? Mm -hmm. It's like that. How many more questions do we have? We have two more questions. Awesome. What's the next one? So, can you get an attachment from your environment? I know you talked about a haunted house or a haunted place. When you go out and about, like, for instance, if you go in a mall or a hospital, you know, of course, you could, you know, cemeteries, they're known for you to get an attachment. Mm -hmm. Do you have the ability to get an attachment like from basically anywhere when you're out and about? Anywhere you go. Even a fucking grocery store. Down the street, 7-Eleven. Now there's 7-Elevens in every corner nowadays. You can even get an attachment. Let's say, for example, you're going out shopping and you pass by somebody who already has an attachment. That attachment can bounce from them to you and then back to them again. Those who are spiritual tend to attract more entities without realizing it because we have these invisible radars, these antennas on top of our heads on us that let other spirits know that we are spiritual and we have the ability to see them, to hear them, to talk to them. Mm -hmm.